Hey everybody, Patrick Norton here for Signal by Sony and today we're going to talk about DSLR and mirrorless cameras. Taking the next step in photography usually means getting a nicer camera than the one that's in your smartphone or a pocket-sized point-and-shoot. Now, back in the day, if you were really serious, this meant getting a DSLR. The big, fat camera that looks all professional, more features, larger image sensors, and the ability to change out lenses to best match what you're doing. Telephoto, wide-angle, the ever-awesome prime lenses for portraits or low light. Now, in the past few years, mirrorless cameras have started to really rival DSLRs. So let's explain what the differences between the two really are and clear up some myths about mirrorless cameras and why one might be a better match for your needs. Now, in an old school DSLR, after the light passes through the lens, it hits a mirror inside the camera that bounces the light through a prism and into the viewfinder you use to frame the shot and focus. Now, in many modern cameras, only part of that light goes through the OVF, or optical viewfinder, while part of it hits a separate autofocus sensor. Now, when you want to take a picture, things get really interesting. You hit the shutter button, and that whole mirror assembly flips up. That's that distinctive taking a picture sound that DSLRs make. Light hits the camera's sensor or film directly and the viewfinder blacks until the exposure is finished. Basically, you'll see approximately the exact same light level as you experience. So if it's dark, you'll have a dark viewfinder and it can be difficult to set up a shot in dark situations. In a mirrorless camera, there's no mirror and no optical viewfinder. Instead, the light passes straight through the lens to the sensor, which handles autofocus and passes the digital image to either the electronic viewfinder or to the big screen. Since there's no mirror mechanism, mechanism inside, the camera can be smaller and still deliver the same quality. Got the differences between interchangeable lens cameras and DSLRs down? Good. Let's blast away some of the myths and misinformation that's out there. True or false? DSLRs have larger sensors than mirrorless cameras. False. Sure, when mirrorless cameras came out years ago, the best full-frame sensors could only be found in larger, heavier, old-school DSLR bodies. Not anymore. Sony's awesome Alpha A7 line packs one of the best full-frame sensors available into an interchangeable lens camera. True or false, mirrorless cameras deliver less battery life. True, when you reduce size, you reduce the amount of space you have for batteries. In the case of a mirrorless, because the idea is to create a much smaller camera body with that beautiful full frame sensor, you'll often find as much as 50% less battery time. Top end mirrorless cameras come with two batteries. And look, it's pretty easy to change out a battery, but we wanted to give you the heads up so you'll know to keep it with you when you're on that once in a lifetime nature adventure or just shooting the kids in the park. By the way, some mirrorless manufacturers, like Sony, actually let you use your smartphone charger to charge the batteries, which again provides benefits for portability. True or false, mirrorless autofocus is inferior. This is another hotly debated topic that's been raging on internet forums since mirrorless cameras were first introduced. The key difference is that DSLR autofocusing directs light using a mirror to a dedicated AF sensor or autofocus sensor for quick focus locks, where in mirrorless, the light passes directly to a sensor that processes both imaging and autofocus. Now, in the past five years, mirrorless cameras have caught up with technologies like Sony's fast hybrid autofocus system, which incorporates both contrast detection and phase detection autofocus on the same sensor and in some cases have faster autofocus speeds and can focus in lower light than a DSLR. True or false, mirrorless cameras don't have great lenses. I gotta say false for this one. First up, Sony's making some great lenses for their mirrorless cameras. Second, you can use non-Sony lenses with a third-party adapter. It's one of the advantage of the super short flange focal distance. That's the space between the mounting ring and the sensor plane. Now that difference varies between cameras and brand, but the adapters can be precisely calibrated so each lens can render an image clearly. That said, wide angle lenses might have some color shift issues in the corners. You'll have to test your lenses and see how they look. True or false, a bigger camera is a better camera. False, if you got a great sensor and a camera that has lots of lens options for great glass, there's no benefit to having a larger camera. That flange back distance or the distance from the lens mount to the sensor is larger for DSLRs because they have to stuff the mechanical mirror assembly between the lens and the sensor. Mirrorless cameras can be smaller, lighter, and easier to carry because they don't have to pack that moving mirror. So, are you wondering why so many serious photographers are all up in arms about mirrorless cameras? Look, better than DSLR autofocus performance, third-party lenses, silent shutter, especially with Sony's new a7R2, a lot of places where you want to be invisible, like photographing a wedding or a golf event, the shutter noise, it's irritating. 
Focus peaking, that allows the camera to outline the edges of whatever is currently in focus with a colored border. Makes it easy for the photographer to use manual focus and ensure a great shot. They're lighter, they're more portable. That's incredibly helpful for drones and underwater photography. Of course, they're smaller and more compact. When you boil it down spec for spec, the lines are now blurred between DSLR cameras and mirrorless cameras. A top of the line interchangeable lens camera like Sony's a7R2 can deliver next generation quality images. To stay on top of everything Sony, be sure to check out the Signal by Sony channel. For now, this is Patrick Norton saying I'll see you next time.